let's get started. Uh, so last session, we started with the multimodal learning where you have at least two modes. One is language and perhaps the other one is images. And then one of the tasks that we were interested in was captioning images. So an image goes in and we want to know the corresponding caption and we want to generate the corresponding caption. And uh, we learned that you can process images using CNN, turn images into vectors, give those vectors to LSTMs, and then uh, the rest of it is just words coming in, just a language uh, task. And the first entry is an image. Uh, the problem here is that you don't have the luxury of having big data sets because somebody needs to look at this image and describe it, look at the other image and describe it. So that's the task of the labeling. We went to the next paper and said, uh, what if there is a way to increase the size of the data automatically? Let's say this is the data that you start with originally. There are pairs of images and uh, their corresponding captions. What if there is a way to focus on the face of the cat with a bounding box around it and say this part of the image corresponds to uh, the tabby cat is leaning? So what if there is a way to put a bounding box around uh, the mouse and say this part of the image corresponds to a laser mouse, etc. If you manage to do that in an automatic fashion, then what would happen to the size of your data? The size of your data, if you say is X, and if you manage to break apart each data point in your original data set into I don't know, five, in this case it is five, one, two, three, four, five. Then you manage to increase the size of your data by five. So now your data is five times bigger. And we know that neural networks like bigger data sets. They like being scaled up. And once you have that, then you can use your generative model from the previous paper. And the model is the same as before. If you have enough data, you're gonna be able to train this model. Now this time, rather than having a big image, going in, you can focus on part of your image. And that's gonna be the input. Now you can have bigger data sets to train this model. Now the question is, uh, unfortunately, you don't have labels for each segment of your image, each portion of your image. So you don't have this and we have to generate it. Either you need to hire a human to do this task for us, or maybe there's another way to generate these labels automatically for each portion of the image. And this paper is going after that automatic way of doing it, okay? Without any label of this kind, the only data that you have are of this kind. You have images and then you have the corresponding sentence. You don't have this. And as you can imagine, you need to know the information that you're gonna need to know is uh, this word corresponds to which part of the image. This other word corresponds to which box. And how strong is that correspondence? As soon as you have that information, you're gonna be able to use it. And then you're gonna be able to assign these words to that, port, that portion of the image. The problem is you don't know that score. You don't know how strong is that relationship between this part of the image and that word. And that's exactly what we want to achieve. So we are gonna use, uh, we are gonna turn an image, an input image, we are gonna, put some bounding boxes in it, corresponding to maybe 19 objects in that image. In addition to the original image, that's gonna give us 20 images to work with. So each image is gonna turn into 20 images. And then those images, you can turn them into vectors using convolutional run networks. You take that portion of the image and you convert it into vectors. So here in this case, for illustration purposes, you have only three boxes, the entire image, the dog and that object. And that's gonna give you three vectors, first vector, second vector, and third vector. Same thing for your sentence, your words, you can convert them into vectors that know something about the context using bidirectional LSTMs. So using some model, you're gonna turn it into vectors. For each word, you're gonna have a vector. Now that you have two vectors that live in the same space, they have the same dimension, you can measure their distance. So you can look at the cosine similarity between the two. So you can look at the cosine similarity between this object and this first word, this other object and this second word. And if you know, if your networks are already trained, 
then you can just use that. You can say, okay, this uh, word seems to having this, the biggest uh, relationship with this part of the image. So I'm gonna assign it to that. So then it's gonna become a task of assignment. But the problem is you don't know these vectors. So you have to train them. Basically, you don't know the parameters of this bidirectional LSTM and you don't know the parameters of your CNN as well as uh, uh, some vectors that are correcting the dimension. So there is a question, how do you deal with the varying size of the boxes when you're using the CNN? Uh, the CNNs, uh, we, go that, we go through them in part one. So there is a way to work with variable sizes. So that one is not a big deal. Usually you take your image, the convolution operation is independent of the input size, the number of pixels in your image. The last layer, you can usually use a max pooling, the same way that we were using global average pooling or global max pooling at the last layer of convolutions for sentences, you can do the same thing. And then that's gonna give you a fixed size vector to work with. Does that answer your question? So yeah, convolutions don't depend on the pixel size. It's the fully connected portion of the network that depends on it. But uh, that one we don't need to worry about because we are gonna use global max pooling or global average pooling. Okay, what is the objective now? You have an image and then you want to get a set of vectors. So that's what we are gonna do here. We are gonna use an object detection system. It's gonna give us 19 objects plus the entire image. That's gonna give us 20 images of varying size to work with. You take those pixels, you push them through a CNN, you correct the dimension using a matrix and uh, H is some number that you choose. Theta C are the parameters of your CNN. You can either fix them or you can fine tune them. And then in the end, an image goes in and a set of vectors is gonna come out, 20 vectors. Each image, we are representing it by 20 vectors. The same thing for your sentence. You take your words, you push them uh, through, you encode the words, you do word embedding, you push them through bidirectional LSTMs, and then you get your vectors in the end. So a sequence of vectors. They have the same dimension. So it's gonna have dimension H. Each one of them is gonna have dimension H. Now the problem is how are we gonna train this? We know that we can look at VI transpose and ST and that's gonna give us a measure of the similarity. That's great. That's cosine similarity distance. That part we know, but how should we train this? How should we train this parameter here the parameters here, the parameters in our bidirectional LSTM, et cetera. You need to look at your data. What data do you have? The only data that you have are these. You don't have that as your data. This is your data. So you need to come up with a score for each pair of image and text. For instance, image one, we know that it corresponds to text one. Image two, it corresponds to text two. Image three corresponds to text three, et cetera. Image K corresponds to text K. That information we know. What other information do we know? We know that image one does not correspond to text two. Image one does not correspond to text three, text four, et cetera. So we are gonna use that information to train these vectors, these vector representations. But then this is how many numbers? I don't know, in this case where you have three vectors for your image, and one, two, three, four, five vectors for your sentence, you had 15 numbers. We need to take that 15 numbers and turn that into a single number. So the first operation that we are gonna do is a max pooling. And the second operation that we are gonna do is a summation. And then for image K and sentence L, you're gonna have a score, a single score. And that's exactly this operation. You multiply them, you find the maximum, max pooling, and then you sum that's gonna give you a single score. And then in terms of your loss function, as I mentioned, image K is gonna to correspond to sentence K and image uh, K is not gonna to correspond to sentence L. So if that happens, if uh, the score of image K and sentence L is bigger than the score of image K and sentence K, you need to penalize it. This is a mistake that the model is making. We need to correct the mistake. That's a loss. And you want this to happen by a margin. That's for images. You can rank your sentences. Sentence K 
corresponds to image K. Sentence K does not correspond to image L. If that happens, if the score is bigger, penalize it. And then after the training, these vectors are going to be in the correct location, these parameters. And basically, this loss function is encouraging alignment between your image portions and sentence portions. And it's discouraging the misaligned pairs by a margin. And your margin is one. OK, so far, so good. Now you know VI, you know ST. Perfect. Now you know scores. You know how to score. These are the scores that you can read off. You pick a word. You compare it to every single box in your image, and then you're going to choose the biggest one. OK, so that's how you're going to solve this uh, inference part of the problem. That was the intuition, the mathematics of it. You want to decode your text segments and align them to your images. So that's what you want to do. Let's say you have a sentence with n words. So this is your sentence with five words. You have an image with n boxes. Let's say this is your image with n boxes, three boxes. You pick a word, let's say t is one. And your question is, what should be the corresponding portion of the image? Should AT be one? Should AT be two? Or should it be three? Dog corresponds to which one of them. And then now, because these are already trained, you know that the relationship between dog and this portion of the image, the score, should be bigger. Basically, this uh, vector, this dot product, should be the biggest. And we are going to use that. We are going to use Markov random fields to solve that problem. But what is that? You're going to write an objective function in terms of your A's. Now you want to find the locations. And then this first term is coming out of looking at box I and word T. And that's going to give you a score. And then you are optimizing over I and T. These numbers, you know, V and S, these two vectors, you know. And you're now optimizing over I and T. OK, that's this portion. If you do that, it's going to assign words to boxes, words to boxes. But now you want to assign portions of your text. You want to preserve some continuity. That's why you're going to add a little bit of extra cost. And what is that? You want to enforce continuity. You want to say that I want to be continuous in time. I want tabby and cat to be strongly correlated. And I want both of them to correspond to the face of the cat. OK? So this is trying to enforce the continuity. This optimization problem, if you approach it the correct way, if you approach it using dynamic programming, is not hard to solve. So you can solve it really quick. Okay. If you set beta to be zero, it means that you don't have this continuity assumption. You're, you're aligning your words to your portions of the image. You're aligning words to bounding boxes. So it's going to be a single word alignment. If you set B to be infinity, you're aligning the entire sentence, this entire sentence, to every single box in your image. And that you don't want. It's too continuous. So some number between them is going to give you the breakdown of your sentences as you like them. And in the end, you're going to get assignments like this. Some of them are incorrect. Like, I, I'm not sure if there is a person taking pictures on that part of the image. But I'm sure there is a man in black shirt standing here. OK? So sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it is correct. It's a statistical framework. Now you have more data. Each portion of this image is going to give you your data. This is additional data to train this multi multimodal RNN from the previous session. You train it, and then you can do your captioning. And it's going to improve the numbers that you had from the previous paper. For instance, this is a construction worker in orange safety waste who is working on the road. Any questions about this? So this part of the paper, I didn't tell you last session. And I guess this portion was missing. Some of you were asking about it. Now here it is. Any questions? Is everything clear? Just one quick question regarding what we do. We then, once we're, we've gone over the entire training data, we have a bunch of image regions that now have phrases attached to them. And then we train a separate model on this augmented data. Exactly. So okay. once you augment your data, it's, this is a separate model. So this RNN is a different RNN from the one that you're using for representing your sentences. OK, that makes sense. Thanks. So this RNN is from the previous paper. So yeah, this was a lot of trouble just to augment the size of your data. If you have bigger data, then you're just fine. Just work with that. OK, any other questions?
Okay, in that case, let's move on to the next.